Reminder to raise your hand if you have a question and we'll get a mic to you. State your name and your affiliate. Screaming ready? Okay. All right, coach. Okay, um, obviously um, another Pac-12 opponent. Um, very talented opponent uh, on both sides of the football. Big athletic football team. Um, have playmakers on both sides of the ball. It's good to hear that a quarterback is going to be available to play. Um, that's a good thing for them, a good thing for football. You don't want those concussions all of a sudden start adding up. And uh, players miss valuable time. Obviously, he is under protocol with, the, with their physicians. They've cleared that young man, uh, which is a good thing. You're always concerned about player safety. I'm glad he's cleared. I'm glad he'll be available to play. Uh, with that being said, um, Previous years, this has been a very emotional game, I think, for both parties. Uh, and uh, fouls have really been a part of this. 30 penalties total in the last two years for over 300 yards. That's not good football. And uh, i got to make sure we understand we can't be a part of that. And I know Coach Helton is probably telling his team the same thing, uh, that you don't want a game marred uh, with penalties. It takes away from uh, the game of football. And uh, I think it's an emotional game. A lot of kids from California uh, playing in Los Angeles, uh, it just becomes that. And uh, it's fine to be emotionally about a game, but you can't let your emotions get the best of you and it becomes marred with fouls. It's just bad. It's just bad, bad football. So I know I'm going to talk to our team about that, and I know Coach Helton and the man he is will also talk to his team. So hopefully that's not part of the game that we watch uh, this Saturday. That being said, any questions? Coach Paul Richardson with the sports game. This game seems a little bit different in that it's, the, it's a road game, one. And two, it's the first time all season you're actually going into the game on the other side of the ledger, so you're three and four. Is there any added pressure with, I know how important it is to win on the road, but not making sure you go to three and five? Well, you don't want to go to anything when you're losing. <laughs> you want to try to win. I mean, that's the most important thing. I think anytime you play, you're going out there with the, with the intentions to win. So I just think all games are important. Uh, they are. They, they are. They're all meaningful because uh, you're either on one side of it or the other. And the one side is, is you're, you're very excited about winning, and the other side of it, uh, you're very depressed about losing. And um, we just have to find a way to, to, to play better in close games. And we got to make the plays that are necessary. And you can go back to our last game or go back to the last four that we've lost by seven. We've had opportunities. Uh, we haven't cashed in on those. And I think uh, our, competitive, uh, our competitive effort is good. Uh, we just got to learn how to win. Uh, plain and simple, you got to learn how to win those games. And when we do, when you start winning games like that, it becomes a part of your DNA and uh, you move past it. But right now, we're struggling with that. Or Chris Carmen, Sun Devil Source. Um, your yards per play numbers is pretty good. Uh, it's actually better than the last five years or six years at ASU. But you, you've mentioned drive sustainment being an issue. Um, can you put your finger on just what, what exactly is going on there? Well, for us, it's just not sustaining drives and getting ourselves in third and long situations. Uh, and then making some costly mistakes. You know, mistakes always play a part of it. Uh, you look at the last game. Um, you get two balls across the 40 and you lose possession of those balls. Well, that's worst case scenario for us. Maybe that's two field goals. Uh, you have a chance to intercept the pass in the red zone and you drop it. Uh, that's taking points away from them and maybe, you know, putting some points uh, for us, but at least taking points away from them. So it's just missed opportunities. And I think uh, that's the game of football. When you win games that are close, you generally take advantage of those opportunities. When you lose games, you can look back at a numerous five or six plays, uh, and, and those are the plays to get you. You know, and so far that's kind of been our season. Uh, with, with, within the games that we've lost, you know, it's been been right in there, nip and tuck. Someone's got to make a play, and we haven't been able to do it yet. Michael Carrots from NBC Sports Radio, Coach. You talk about making the plays, but each week it seems like the defensive just the effort, the mentality, I mean, has gotten stronger. And 
it seems to be frustrating more teams. I mean, like Paul said, I know three and four, but the steps the defense is taking, are you, like he's word happy or satisfied, but do you like the improvement you see? Well, I, I think we knew going in that uh, we were trying to rebuild a defense, a new system, uh, asking players to do some things a little bit different than they've done in the past. I, I think they're starting to understand uh, what it takes to play good defense. Now we've got to continue to do that. Uh, we're playing a very talented team. I mean, these guys are talented. I mean, they've always been talented. Uh, it, never, it, it never ends with these guys. I mean, the eras that I was at Cal, they were very talented. They had 11 players uh, that went to the National Football League on one team. Uh, so, you know, that's what you get. And you know, when you play a team like this, they're always in the game because of their capability of making a big play on either side of the ball, game-changing plays. And that's, that's what they possess. And, um, you know, you got to be well aware of that, that they're never out of the game, these guys. They can always find a way to make a play or two on either side of the ball to, to change the outcome of a game. And we have to be aware of that. Coach Hoda, Rubino, Devils Digest. When you look at the three wins, what are the things that you believe that worked well for the offense then that didn't work in the other games? It was, was it merely just caliber of opponent because – you know, when you compare UTSA and Oregon State to other um, opponents, obviously, that might not be a fair comparison. Well, in the Michigan State game was, was uh, probably a level playing field for the most part. Uh, they probably had more experience. But we got it to a game where it was a one-score game, like a lot of the games, and we were able to finish it off with the last drive. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's, that's how it worked. It, it just kind of worked out that way. Uh, I, I think uh, for us offensively, uh, we've, we've sputtered some. There's no doubt about it. Um, we got to find a way to, to get that going again. And there's a lot of veteran guys on offense. Um, but we got to sustain drives, I just think. That's, that's the key to us. Uh, if we sustain drives and we have the nucleus of, of, of just putting some drives together, um, then we're pretty good. When we don't do that, we're not very good. And we're like any other offense. And so I just think that we got to take a look at it. And you're right, the caliber of opponent has a lot to do with it. Uh, we, we've played some pretty good teams down the stretch here, and their records indicate they're pretty good. I think most of them have only won, lost one game. <laughs> so they're pretty good football teams, and uh, you, you can't give them second chances. We're not good enough yet to do that. There'll come a time when we're good enough, but right now we're not. We have no margin for error. We, we got to play error-free, and that's hard against good teams because when you make a couple errors or you don't take advantage of the opportunities, they don't let you back in the game. That's how it works. Herm, Doug Howler, The Athletic. There's a lot of noise. Change now, Athletic. <laughs> That's right. Got you, brother. There's a lot of noise around the conference right now about the officiating. And there, oh. was, there was some close calls here the other night. Is, is there a danger when that happens, when the conversation kind of goes that direction to uh, your team and, and them with a the mindset of not just fighting the other team, but you're also dealing with the officials as well? Well, I've always felt this. Uh, uh, they have a difficult job. They really do. Um, when you think about them, they never have a home game. Uh, wherever they go, depending on when they leave the stadium, how it ends for the home team, then they get the crux of the blame if it doesn't work out or whatever it may be. Uh, you know, they've got some difficult decisions to make, and they're under the spotlight. And I, and I think, like anything, TV and instant replay – has really made it hard on their profession because we visualize and we things, see things in slow motion and it's easy to sit in our living room or in the, in the sky boxes and say, well, you know, they don't see it that way. It's a bang, bang play and that's what they see. And if you're not in the right position at some times, you might not see it all and, and, that, and that happens. And so, you know, there's a holding call on every play. You want to call it. The, the nature of their game is this, and um, a good friend of mine who was, was a fabulous official in the National Football League, his name is Jim Tunney, good friend of mine. And um, what you don't want to do as an official is you never want to give an opponent the advantage. You never let players have the advantage of when a guy can't make a play because you, you've created an un, a uncomparable advantage, and you don't want to do that. And officials sit in that position when they have to make a call. And it's a fast call because the ball moves so fast. And so, you know, when, when you see fouls, it's never good for football because officials don't want to be part of the game. That's their job. They, they want it to be a clean game. You never want a game to end, regardless of the score, the outcome, where people are talking about the officials. 
That's not good for football, not good for sports. And so I just think they have a tough job to do. They do the best they can. And I just leave it at that. I, 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 I'm not one to, to talk about officiating. I've done this too long in my lifetime. Uh, I know how hard that job is. And um, they do the best they can. They, they, their eyes tell them this, and they, they call it. And last time I checked, they don't pick it up. When it's on the ground, you're not going, you can holler, you can rant, you can rave, you can talk about it a week later. Game's over. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we just we move on. And that's how it works. And if you don't worry about it. And I don't let my team talk about it. I know Danny had a little outburst, and I told him, I said, can't do that. That's, that's not who we are. We don't, we don't get into that one. And he understood. I think he came in and apologized, which he should have done. Uh, but I've never, ever, since being a player and a coach, worried about officiating. I just try to get ready for the opponent and let the game be played and let it play. That's how it works for me. Coach, uh, Harley, you're out Cronkite News. When you yes, took sir. over um, the program, you said that you really wanted to build the program. Yes. So what, what is your opinion on where the state of the program is right now in terms of this season and recruiting looking forward down the road? Well, recruiting, I think we won't know until actually the signing date, but, uh, but I think we uh, made some headway uh, on that. Um, it's a process, and you got to enjoy the process, and I do. I enjoy the process. I, don't, I look at it as a process. There's, there's, a, there's a way you go about doing it. And I think the thing you have to realize is you got to stick to your plan. You can't panic. You cannot panic, and I won't. I'm not a, look, you guys have watched me coach seven games. You see any panic in me? You won't. You just won't. I have a, I have a, a great view and vision of what we're trying to do here. And I think the players understand that, the coaching staff understands that, the administration understands that. We're all on the same page. And I said this when I took this job. When those players walk into that stadium, especially our stadium, and they walk by that Tillman statue, whatever they have, they'll leave on the grass. Now, we haven't won enough games. But their effort, you will not question that. You will not question that. And that has never been a question. Now, we got to win more games. I want to win games. I mean, this is too hard. I mean, <laughs> waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day and coming over here and spending 13, 14 hours a day, that's not fun. But there's a process. And any time I can get a player better and I see players getting better, I'm OK with that because we're getting better. And eventually, those things, you get closer and closer and closer. And all of a sudden, you start winning those games. And then, then it becomes a little bit of your DNA. And you know what? You know, OK, this is what we do now. We haven't we've gotten close. We just got to go win, win a couple of those. We still, we'll have some chances. We got five more. We got chances still. So we got a chance this week. But we got to play really, really good. And we know that. And we got to get them ready to play good. Coach, uh, Shane Dale with ABC 15. Mm -hmm. Just in your experience, especially with the younger players, when you lose a lot of close games, does it sort of become a mental thing? Like, how are we going to get over the hump? Yeah, and I think what you do is you, you reflect on the game and you give them, uh, you give them hope. And uh, they know. I mean, they watch the tape. And you go back and you say, here it is. It's right here for us. And they get it. And, and you know, the thing about them, I like the resolve. They, they continue to fight, you know, and they'll continue to fight because they understand they're that close. And it's hard because I feel bad for the players. I mean, I really do because of the effort and everything they put into it. I said, it's going to cash in one day for you guys. And so we just got to continue to play that way, and eventually it'll, we'll, we'll get one to go our way again, and we'll feel a lot better. And I won't be sitting in here and going, hey, we lost by seven again. You know, if I was, I guess, in Vegas or gambling, boy, I'd be betting on seven all the time. We'd be winning, huh? Man, not, it's not Vegas, though. It's football. Herm, um, you know how it goes with quarterbacks, you know. People are in love with him and people hate yeah, him. Yeah, it's a tough job. Is there any message that you're giving Manny right now to kind of keep him, you know, moving yeah, in we, the right we, direction? Yeah, we, we, you know, obviously I talk to Manny uh, after every game. And uh, he is, he's fine. And I told him, I said, hey, we're just a couple plays either way of, of being here or there. And he knows. I mean, he's a quarterback. I mean, when the table's set, any quarterback wants that opportunity to say, OK, I got the ball. And um, hopefully we can continue to do that and get him the ball in situations where he's going to have to make some plays. 
and he's going to do it. I mean, I, I trust the guy, and he works at it, and that's all he can do, you know. And, and he needs help too, though. I mean, you know, it, it's not like just all on him. Like, can can we on defense give him some short fields every once in a while, and and and, and give him the opportunity to to have a short field and have some momentum, rather than all the time starting from from a deficit or or when they do score a touchdown, not allowing them to score a touchdown in the next three minutes, <laughs> where he feels like, I just scored a touchdown, guys, and you gave up another touchdown in two minutes. You know, you can't do that. So we have to build some momentum for him, and um, we got to help him. He can't do it by himself, you know, and, and when he makes some throws, players got to catch it too. I mean, that's, that's how it works. It, it just works. It's a, it's a team effort, and I think, obviously, the quarterback and the head coach, um, they're tied together because – in your lifetime, that record that you have as a coach and a, and a, and a quarterback travel with you. Doesn't travel with anybody else. Travels with the head coach and the quarterback. No, nobody else cares. They say, well, the quarterback won this many games, the head coach won this many games, quarterback lost this many games, head coach lost this many games. I get it. So we're tied together. That works. Coach Blaine McCormick, uh, yes, 12 News. I, I was just wondering, you've – talked a lot about emotions and especially with your players mm -hmm. but what about for yourself personally and you mentioned the 13 14 hour days how are you doing with your emotions right now at this point in the season oh shoot I'm great I, I was on sabbatical for nine years you guys just thought I was on TV not doing anything you guys just thought I was just on television for an hour a day I was traveling 6,000 miles a week Let's think about that Going to work, right? Going to work, coming back. From California, going to Bristol, Connecticut. Everybody thought I lived in Bristol because I was there so much. Even my family thought I lived there for a while. But, uh, no, I'm fine. I, you know, I, I've done this my whole life. This is who I am. I mean, it doesn't – my emotions are fine. I'm, I'm pretty – now, you don't see me talking to the players. You don't see me in the meetings. Uh, you kind of see me on the practice field. And every once in a while I have, a, you know, one of those outbursts. But for the most part, I've done this too long. You know, it's, it's players don't want to fail. They don't. And I get that. I, I say that as a former player, you know, and, and, and you got to help them. That's what you do. And, and they're, they go off my lead. They look at me every day and they go, how is the coach coming in to meeting today? What is he going to say? How is he feeling? Well, I'm the guy that turns the lights on in this building. You know, so I got to have energy. But that's who I am. I mean, that's my personality. I mean, I just, I love life. I do. Because life is short. It's shorter than you think. And life's a circle. You know, it's just a big circle. And the people you touch in your life is important. These are young men. And you always have to give them hope knowing that, you know what? Every Saturday we walk onto the ball yard, we're going to have a chance to win. They believe that. They truly believe that. And I got to make sure they understand it. Every time we walk in the ball yard, it doesn't matter if it's here, on the road, doesn't matter if we're favorite, underdog, we're going to have a chance to win. Now, we got to do some things correctly to win, but, you know, that's what the head coach has to do. And I think those guys believe in me and they trust in me that uh, they're going to have an opportunity to win and they got to go make the place to do it. Herm, just building off my earlier question. So uh, after the San Diego State game, you put in more of the gap scheme stuff. And then after the bye week, it seemed like there were some additional wrinkles that maybe could build off of that. Is this kind of a multi-stage process of becoming what you guys are going to be? And irrespective of maybe the, the scores or the results, are you seeing things about that that you like? Yeah, I am. And uh, I, I think there's a process of what you're trying to do on both sides of the ball, understanding that there's certain things that have to stay in place because of the of the players, correct? Because you don't want to put the players in a position where it's up. This is all new. You, you try to build a program around the talent you have, and you say, okay, this is what these guys can do well. With that being said, you're also trying to establish a foundation of it's going to go here. Okay, defense is not very hard because it's new. Offense, a little bit different, just a little bit different on offense because of the of the of the players that are back on offense. There's more veteran players over there than there are defensively, let's just say, okay? And so you want to keep that somewhat similar. Run games change a little bit. You've seen that, all right? And, and that's probably going to be us. I shouldn't say probably. It's going to be us, okay? As, as we continue this process, um, now it's just a matter of how do we blend that with the passing game? 
You know, how does the passing game and the run game fit together? And that's what we're trying to do, along with understanding what are Manny's strengths? What are his strengths? We have to make sure the passing game is in a place where he feels comfortable, you know, doing what's required of him. And when we don't do that, then we fail Manny. And we don't want to do that as coaching staff, and we won't do that. Okay, thank you, folks. All righty.